solution Can't remember the question In all the confusion Close your eyes If you really want to know Sometimes dreaming Is the only way to go So dream on Professor Duncan, I have arrived. All right, men. Let's move out. Yes? Uh, hi, I'm looking for Professor Duncan. He's my father, and he's not home right now. Well, I'm David Hanley, the new American history professor. You? <laughs> You're a professor? Yes, I am. Thank you for that vote of confidence. <laughs> Anyhow, I just got here from Oregon, and I spoke to a woman from the faculty housing office before I left. She said there was an apartment for me here in your building, and they'd leave the key with your father. Come on in. Wow. This is beautiful. Let's go, Dave. Keep it moving. <laughs> Look at this, this office. <laughs> you know, your father's always been just a famous name to me, or a face on the back of a book, but this, this is his office. Ah, here's your key. Your apartment's the one right across the hall. You could go in there now. Unless, of course, you'd like to stay here and cuddle up under his desk. <laughs> yes, I'd like that, thank you. professor because every professor I've ever met is weird and you are weird I take it you're not a big fan of academics if it were up to me I would drop out of high school tomorrow but dad says that if I do that my mother will turn over in her grave that wouldn't be good mm. I'd also like to move out and get my own apartment but if I do that my mother will turn over in her grave again well that's okay at least you get her back in the right position <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, thanks for the key, and I'll be seeing you around. Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> well, Tom, Magic, we finally made it. I know you guys have been in and out of that box a lot of times, and I know it's my fault, but this is my last stop. No more drifting around. It's time for Dave Hanley to finally settle down. I'm a history professor now, guys. So wish me luck. Good luck, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. Work hard, but remember, have fun, too. Okay. Make us proud. Hey, I will. Feel good? I do. That's good. All right. All right. Yes. <laughs> Boy, you know something, guys? I think fate is really on my side here. I mean, Roland G. Duncan is a man I've always admired so much. I mean, it was his work, his writings, that inspired me to become a professor in the first place. Now, here I am, his colleague. It's got to be fate, don't you think, guy? That's one nothing. <laughs> guys. Guys. Uh, what? Some other time, huh? Oh, sure. Sorry, man. <laughs> oh, 
Vernon. One and the same. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Philly, my man. Oh, it's great to see you, buddy. You look great. What, what are you doing here? I thought you said you had to work late tonight. Yeah, well, you know, after you called, I felt ashamed of myself. How could I turn my back on my oldest friend in the world on his first night in town? So I said, hey, the world of investment banking can do without me tonight. My first priority right now is you. Now, whatever you want, I'm your man. Want to help me unpack? No. <laughs> I'm double parked and my motor's running, Dave. We're going to Atlantic City. Atlantic City? Yeah. I, I can't do that. Why? I just can't. What? Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. Hey, Vern, a few years ago, I would have jumped at this chance. Things are different now, you know? I'm a college professor. If there was ever a time to start acting like a mature, responsible adult, the time is now. You may be right, Dave. You know, you just may be right. Well, I better get moving. My man Don Rickles goes on at 11. Hey, Vern. I missed you, buddy. <laughs> Same here, bro. But hey, we're together again. The men. The... <laughs> hey, Vern, think fast. Hey, oh, ha, what are you doing? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I was a sucker for that move, buddy. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to have to hurt you now, Hanley. <laughs> Come on. I forgot to give you the key to your mailbox. Uh, just put it on the shelf there, thanks. He's my investment banker. I didn't think anyone... I'm sorry, I should have knocked. I'm sorry. <laughs> Come in. Come in. Oh. Oh. oh, my goodness. Oh, please forgive me. It's just, you said come in. I know I said come in. But you didn't come in when I said come in. I know. I, I should have. Well, I, I meant to. I'm sorry. And I wanted this year to be different. <laughs> I just have to get one of my books. I'm David Hanley, the new assistant professor. Oh, yes. Hi. Who are you? I'm sorry. I'm Margaret Callahan. I teach Egyptian history. Nice to meet you, Margaret. Oh, likewise. So, who had this job before me, Margaret? Uh, Professor Antonelli. Where is he now? Oh, I'm not really sure. He's dead, that's all I know. Callahan. Yes? Where's your class list for the Ancient Egypt seminar? It's right here. <laughs> Professor Duncan. Hello. I'm David Hamley, the new assistant professor. <laughs> I just wanted to take this moment to tell you how honored I am to get this job in your department, sir, and that I plan to work very hard to live up to your expectations for me. I don't have any. <laughs> Sir, I didn't hire you. I was away on sabbatical last semester. I came back to find out that Aunt Nellie had dropped dead, and they hired you. Not only that, they painted my office. Yes, sir, I heard about Professor Antonelli. That's a tragic, tragic loss, sir. Beige, they painted it beige, for God's sake. You can't turn your back five minutes around here, and then it's so, well, I'll hold it up. <laughs> Professor Duncan. Oh, uh, well, sir, I was just wondering if you'd like to join me for an espresso after work. It would give me a chance to tell you a little bit about myself. Espresso? Yes, sir. Uh, it's like coffee, only it comes in these little tiny... Oh, I know what espresso is, Henry. I already know all about you. I read your application. Uh-huh. Six months in a lumber camp in Oregon, four months on a lobster boat in Maine, large blocks of time drifting around with no gainful employment whatsoever. 
Very impressive. Well, sir, you know how it is. I, I just need a little time to wander, that's all. <laughs> Build character, you know. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing when I was your age, Henley. I was invading North Korea. Now that sort of thing builds character. You've never invaded North Korea, have you? No. To be honest, it never occurred to me. Of course not. You're a dilettante, Henley. You're a self-indulgent, irresponsible beatnik. In the life of me, I can't understand why anyone saw fit to hire you. I guess that's a no to the espresso. That's right. Hanley, I warn you, don't go invading North Korea just to impress me. Wait till you see the stuff I just bought, Vernon. It's great. What is it? I don't know. The lady down the street was moving. She sold me all the kitchen stuff. All right, look at this. This is great. This is what I need. This is, what is this? A jello mold. Great, look, there's, there must be 20 of them in here. 30, 40 ice cube trays, a couple of dozen oven mitts, only 200 bucks. Dave, you've been in the woods too long. Yeah, I know. This isn't working out, Vern. This trying to settle down and be an adult thing, I'm no good at it. Hey, I, I tell you what, pal. I'm gonna go grab a quick shave, and then you and I are going out to find us some Liberty Bells. <laughs> you know, bells. The bells. I'll go shave. Margaret? Hi, David. <laughs> My heel broke. What are you doing here? Oh, well, um, I was just across the hall at Professor Duncan's welcome back party for the history department. And um, then I left to go home, but, uh, but then I remembered that I came here with Professor Gruber because I don't drive, but she's still in there. So I was waiting for her out in the hall until she came out and... My heel broke. I can't believe it. I know. I can't believe he didn't invite me. Oh, he must have, David. He invited everyone in the history department. The invitations were in our mailboxes back at school. Our mailboxes? Margaret, that's it. I, I didn't check my mailbox. I didn't know I had a mailbox. This is great. <gasps> yes, it is. You have a mailbox. Vernon! Yo! I got some great news. I gotta go across the hall for a few minutes. My boss invited me to a party. All right, good deal. Yeah. Margaret, do you want to come in with me? No, I already left. Uh, well, it's silly for you to wait here in the hall. Why don't you wait in my apartment? Oh, uh, all right. <laughs> Sarah, how's it going? Great. Come on in. I agree completely, Fred. Remley's paper was a brilliant piece of work. Groundbreaking. Uh, I'm sorry I'm late. I'm David Hanley. Oh, yes. Please join us, David. How nice to see you. Excuse me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Hi, how you doing? Oh, excuse me. I brought something. Anyone? I'm fine, thanks.
Yikes, a prowler. Oh, no, no, I'm not. I, I work with David. He said I could be here. Want a beer? A beer? Gee, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't usually. If only... A beer. You know David? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I do. Yeah, David and I grew up together. Uh, must have been nice. <laughs> you still keep in touch? Well, yes. As you can uh, see, I'm in his apartment. I don't really have any friends like that. People I still keep in touch with from childhood. Do you? Yes. Dave. Oh, Dave. I work with Dave. <laughs> What's so amazing about Wembley is that he can find new gems of wisdom in a body of documents that's been explored many times over. I agree. You know, he really should expand this last piece into a book. Oh, I wonder why he hasn't thought of it. Hanley, what's your opinion of Wembley's thesis? Well, I, uh, I didn't get a chance to uh, actually read it, per se. <laughs> So I was in Alaska cutting timber when that came out, sir. How interesting, Dave. Oh, thank you. Uh, yes, actually, it was a, a fascinating experience. You see, uh, I, I went up there to visit a, a friend of mine, and, and uh, I really loved it so Hanley. much that... Yes, sir. Wembley. Oh, no, sir, it's Hanley. You had it right the first time. <laughs> I'd really like to know what you think about Wembley, Hanley. Uh, well... <clears throat> To be honest with you, sir, I've never really been a very big fan of Wembley's. Yeah, you see, I, I feel that he's fallen out of touch with what's going on in the small towns and, and rural areas of America. Uh-huh. Well, as you know, I've traveled very extensively over the past few years, and, uh, and I've gotten a chance to see firsthand how, how people really live in this country. Well, I've developed a lot of ideas about America and American history. Well, of course, Wembley's got 35 years of teaching experience to validate his ideas. How many years teaching do you have, Henley? Well, I, uh... Would zero be the number you're groping for? <laughs> Approximately zero, yes, sir. Well, that's okay. The important thing is you've been a lumberjack. <laughs> oh, come on, Dad. At least Dave's ideas don't come from stupid books. Uh, Sarah. I mean, he lives life. He does things. In fact, just yesterday, I saw him wrestling on the floor with a black man. <laughs> but actually, if I could live during any period in history, I think I'd want to live in ancient Egypt. <laughs> After all, I know all their dances. <laughs> You know, Vernon, you're the first person I've told all this to. You're the first person who's ever been really interested. Dave! Where you been, man? You said a few minutes. Sorry. Hey, listen, I gotta run before she starts dancing again. <laughs> Did you have a nice time? <laughs> Duncan hates me, Margaret. Oh, he hates everybody, David. 
Something about me just strikes a nerve in the man. I, this is not at all what I expected him to be like. How can that be the same man that wrote this wonderful book? I don't know. Well, there's one thing I do know. You, David, are going to be a great professor. What makes you think so, Margaret? When I first read this book, like, ten years ago, I came away with a very distinct feeling about what you must be like. You were a very compassionate man. Yesterday, I got a completely different impression of you. Well, you probably misinterpreted the book. <laughs> well, I hope I didn't, sir. Because it was this book that made me realize I wanted to be an American history professor. Your book. <laughs> I'd read other books about the Founding Fathers, and, and they just go on and on about these great, perfect men who could do no wrong. Just didn't have that ring of truth for me, you know? And then I read this. This is not a book about one-dimensional heroes. No, this is a book about fallible men, frightened men. Men who found themselves at a crucial moment in history where, where they had to either triumph over their own fears and insecurities or die. There is tremendous humanity and compassion in this book, sir. Well, I'm glad you liked the book, Henley. You through now, or do I have to hear what you thought of Little Women? No, sir, I'm not through yet. I think I understand now what's been tripping me up here. Your humanity and compassion is very selective. You reserve it for people like the men in this book who are willing to struggle. Struggle against the worst parts of themselves to get at what's best. That's it, isn't it? I think you know me pretty well, don't you? No more than you know me. Nightline with Ted Koppel. Close to a quarter million U.S. teenagers have abortions every year. The controversy is over whether their parents have a right to know. When you find yourself in a tough spot, take the time to think your way out. It works for MacGyver. Mondays. And Monday, the Giants meet the Cowboys on NFL football. Good night.